So uh, let me just uh, confirm uh, either my this screen is visible and the voice is clear. Is there any distortion or any problem? Yeah, your voice is clear. Okay, brilliant. And what about the presentation? The screen is quite visible? Yes, it's uh, clear, visible, visible. Okay, so thank you very much for this confirmation. Mm -hmm. So uh, warmly welcome again for this important training, Saudi Aramco yes, Camp Inspector Training. And, uh, you know, before we start uh, discussing anything relevant to Aramco theories, why don't we create something in our own mind, you know, consider if you got a project and you are supposed to hire 500 new employees, okay? And you are the one going to be responsible for providing the residential facilities to them. So here the question is how are we gonna design the layout or the kind of residential facilities for our upcoming employees. That should be our first question to consider, you know, like, because uh, I always mention safety starts from the design actually. And why I mention safety starts from the design, because if a layout or a kind of uh, uh, facilities you designed, if it is not designed according to the international safety standards, of course, you know, the probability of incidents or accidents would be higher for, for sure, right? And on the other side, uh, we firmly believe like you guys are also practically experienced person and I can understand, you know, your caliber even. Mm -hmm. But the moment uh you... Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Sorry for interrupting you. Yeah, please. Uh, we are using the we are using the projector. That's why only one laptop we will use. Huh? Okay, no, it's okay. Laptop. It's okay. It's okay. No problem. Now we have a no projector. <laughs> and we see, you can see we have. A, oh, sorry. And it's a great, a great, Michelle. Like great. That's another okay. professional. You know, sometimes uh, uh, it's it's much better actually. Instead of creating distortion for ten different PCs. It's much yes, better yes. to use one laptop yeah. and with projector and everything. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, Masha. Uh, we have uh, we have my colleagues here. Mr. Chad is already here. Hello, say hi. Hello. Okay. Hi. Yeah. Warmly welcome to everyone. Yeah. Thank you very much for being here. Okay. So uh, we were talking about this all game of design actually, and the, you know prevention is better than cure, right? Yes, sir. Instead of uh, waiting for incidents or accidents, so we should try to develop something productive from the design and to the end product in a way that there isn't possibility of or very negligible possibilities of incidents or accidents, you know. That's why the residential compounds, uh, uh, personally, as a trainer, as an auditor, uh, even as a consultant, I can give some feedback practically from the side. Uh, people are very much reluctant, you know, uh, it's not like intentionally, but unintentionally because uh, while working at the site for 12 hours, now coming back to the residential facilities or coming back to the camp, everybody needs a relaxation, you know. They don't want to feel that they, they are still at work or they are, you know, while the phenomena is safety belongs to not on, uh, on the site, even off the site, you know, wherever you are. Safety must be our first priority. But as a human nature, whenever we off from the job site, we try our level best to relax, to enjoy, not to focus so many areas, you know, which are like, uh, 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 like including me, you know, <laughs> if I come back to my room, I just want to take rest. I don't want to do electrical systems inspection. I don't want to check any kind of sensors to be there. I don't want to check my fire extinguisher is active or not, you know, because uh, this is something entirely, uh, I'm already tied up for 12 hours. So now I truly want a complete rest in my room rather than focusing on all these things. So that's why we need camp inspectors, you know. That is the reason we need uh, third eye actually, you know, uh -huh. can double check and make sure nothing will go wrong actually. 
So, uh, and you guys are very much important because uh, if you have 500 employees uh, in the residential facilities, everybody is uh, focusing that you are the only one can highlight if anything is bad and how they have to correct either belong to fire safety or electrical or chemicals or any kind of things they are using, including uh, kitchen stuff and so many other areas. So. Uh, the the best part is uh, you know much better to have a preventive management system in instead of uh, uh, creating or ignoring something in the design phase actually because sometimes we ignore a lot of uh, uh, features you know while we are designing our layout or the res residential rooms or even using containers i would say uh, yeah. you know the paint on the container is very much critical to consider either it is uh, uh, fire resistible material or attacks accrued like can help even in the uh, sudden if uh, kind of a blast is there still resistible so a lot of factors uh, we truly need to consider even let's talk about the food safety even how how a camp inspector can help people to understand the importance of food safety so that is why we need one designated well-trained guy who can go in every nook and corner and all areas he can verify and double check proactively if something is uh, abnormal or any unsafe uh, condition is there or any element he believe can lead to an incident must be corrected uh, proactively actually that is why yeah. i mentioned the camp inspectors are very much important you know so yes, warmly sir. welcome to all of you again so this is all about the areas we are going to discuss we're going to discuss about the toilets and showers how they have to be inspected uh, plenty of uh, eating areas and kitchen facilities we'll talk about laundry facilities common areas uh, cleaning schedule even telephones how you guys going to manage sleeping rooms and food hygiene pest control a, a very critical subject especially for the remote areas you know like in the desert areas, I would say. Same way LPG cylinders and drinking water, trash, fire system safety, electrical safety, medical requirements, food safety, water safety inspections, reporting and training records and record keeping. You know, sometimes people feel uh, very much uh, irritation actually because of this over documentation. Uh, that's why sometimes, uh, to be very honest, we hate a Ramco system also. <laughs> <laughs> why they are putting a lot of documented pressures on us and for every activity for everything we are performing there we have to record somewhere so over documentation is another sign of irritation sometimes we also personally feel you know when we like if i'm delivering this training i have to prepare plenty of reports to submit our uh, departments to understand this is how the session is delivered and this is you know uh, overall the management of that project while execution same way but there is a there is a concrete purpose of it actually it's a very much important purpose you know like uh, first is uh, is our ethical responsibility we don't want to see anyone to be died mm -hmm. at our site it's a brand goodwill it's a business continuity requirement mm -hmm. we don't want to demolish our goodwill locally even globally you know and on the other side a, a huge financial impacts actually so because of financial reasons also we try a level best to keep our systems uh, well established well implemented so nothing should go bad you know and still i would uh, say a lot of incidents are still happening now here i really want to talk to your experience what do you think why accidents are still happening especially in residential facilities you know what are the real root causes what are these small terrible mistakes you know usually our employees are doing at within their bedrooms or in kitchen or anywhere they are at the residential facilities actually yeah because sometimes, why sometimes because sometimes you know, the tenants, tenants and uh, or other uh, visitors is not taking care for their safety, then he don't know how to identify the hazard Excellent. around the round for this uh, uh, quarters. You know, absolutely right. 
Absolutely. So lack of training or maybe because yes. uh, they didn't take proper induction, maybe, you know, because there must be some induction programs uh, yeah. and uh, we have to train them. You know, these are prohibited areas. These are the existing hazards or some kind of uh, things they have to take care. These are the muster points or in case of emergency, how they have to react. So all these things, of course, you know, especially to the Visitors, I totally agree because sometimes uh, visitors are very much VIP, so they don't want to learn actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so they just want to go on their own way. So that's why. You know, sometimes it's a careless mind, you know, they didn't uh, understand the situation where he will go into inside of the toilet or inside the room, what is the hazard that's that, uh, present during his uh, use of that uh, uh, facilities. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So that's why these are the key areas we have to discuss. And even though you guys are experienced and very much, much knowledgeable, but still let's try to understand how our AMCO is supporting us, you know, through their knowledge, through such kind of theories to keep our knowledge refreshing. Sometimes people say safety is a common sense, but what if someone doesn't use that common sense? <laughs> Everybody have that common sense, but uh, it's, yes, yes. it's our choice. Either we want to use this common sense, yes or no. That's our own uh, decision. You know. So objectives of uh, these trainings are quite clear. We we truly need to ensure that employees uh, have all the essential informations, especially to comply with their anchor requirements. And of course, we need. Uh, to ensure our camp administrators or kind of supervisors, they're implementing all these requirements. And remember, these requirements, we have to further uh, incorporate through some uh, kind of SOPs or procedures or some kind of rules, regulations, because our requirements mean this must be done. And the procedure must be there to guide the steps how we have to done it, right? So either these SOPs we are getting from Aramco, if we are not getting, then at least our, you know, company must have all these this through our safety department, you know, to implement and to comply all the Aramco requirements. And also this contractor camp, uh, you know, compliance is uh, uh, pretty important because Aramco have intention usually to visit their camps and just to make sure, you know, that as a customer, as a, uh, a project uh, awarding authority, <laughs> they are trying their level best to play their role also, because it's a mutual responsibility, the contractors as well as Saudi Aramco as a customer. Because sometimes I say, imagine if we are so much responsible, but our customer is not taking care. So then things can again go in a very wrong direction. That's why Aramco is also trying to play their role at their, uh, existing capacity or the level of seriousness, seriousness they have project to project. But yes, 100% is, uh, uh, we can't say that 100% everything will be accurate, but that's why I'm talking about, we have to start thinking safety and incorporate all the requirements from the design phase. And remember my words, the prevention is much, much better than cure. You know? Instead of waiting for the incidents, why don't we work on prevention system, you know? like fire prevention system, you know, like uh, a pest prevention system, like, you know, no wastage, uh, 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 you know, proper waste management system or on the other side, uh, uh, you know, all the hazards and risk are proactively identified and uh, existing controls, we must be validated and uh, make sure, you know, uh, nothing is, uh, no serious gap is left actually. So then later on, if still something happens, uh, God forbid, so then remember we are the human beings. We don't want accidents intentionally, but yes, unintentionally still things can go wrong. That's why continual training, refresh trainings of our employees are also important, not only to the camp inspectors, because no doubt they are the most important gentlemen, especially at the residential facilities, every day going to inspect, going to every nook and corner of the camp and make sure nothing will go wrong. But still, they are also human. Might be they are also ticking, you know, everything is okay. 
So be careful with your inspection reports as well, because sometimes as an auditor, as a safety auditor, I evaluated some of the checklists. And uh, just for a cross check, I asked, you know, how come every day, 100%, everything is okay? I mean, why you didn't highlight any gap? Because the biggest room in the world is the room for further improvement. So how are you going to say that everything is 100% accurate? And every day, like for the last 90 days, uh, random record are verified. So why you don't want to highlight something, any gaps or any kind of signs of improvements you are planning further in? And then they anyhow realized and uh, they started focusing on each checking point instead of just tick, tick, tick and make sure everything is okay. And such reports, to be very honest, will demolish our uh, trust uh, with our customers also because if we are ticking everything okay, 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 a time will come our customers will start analyzing, yes, we are not trustworthy people that we are lying actually in our documentation. So fulfilling the RANCO requirements, Okay, so fulfilling rank requirements. Uh, is it okay now? Yes, okay now. Yes. So, so fulfilling rank requirements, not only for a rank as a customer, or our customer should be happy. Yes, it should be our objective to keep our customer happy. But first of all, we must be you know ethically responsible for our employees because our first customers are our employees, you know. They are the biggest asset, you know. Imagine if you guys are not there, how your company will be completing and executing all the projects. If you are not safe or not healthy, how quality and productivity can be ensured, you know, in executing phase, you know. It's not like only to get the project and later on uh, demolishing, you know, the deadlines or ignoring quality productivity just by having sick people at site. Imagine this COVID-19, uh, how many checkpoints we implemented because we don't want to see any sick person at our site. We know our quality, productivity, and on the other side, uh, more uh, danger to our other employees, right? So that is why it's not like only, please guys, uh, this is kind of a preaching I always do. Don't take only Aramco precious. Don't work only because of Aramco precious. I mean, get these benefits by yourself for your company. Like if we have a better health and safety management system well implemented, that will ensure our better work environment and happiest employees with better well-beings, you know. And on the other side, of course, uh, the happiest employees are the best employees to ensure quality and productivity and more sharp results, you know, we're going to get at our project sites, actually. So, uh, Yes, customer pressures are always there, but please, we, we have to realize that this is our, first of all, our responsibility instead of, uh, if imagine if a Ramco doesn't say, okay, guys, uh, we will not tell you anything about safety. does not mean we have to ignore safety. You know? I hope you got the point. So to have a clean, hygienic camp and exhibit health and safety and welfare of employees, uh, that should also be the outcome of this uh, training. And no doubt, uh, as a contractor, as a subcontractor, we all are responsible to meet Saudi Aramco expectations. I already mentioned 100% is really hard, but still we can try. We can try for 100%, but at least uh, above 90 or above 91 or 95%. This is all our efforts must be there. You know. But yes, uh, remember Aramco also realized that 100% is not possible. They, they as a brand also realized, you know, it, that's why in some of their theories, they mentioned 100% safety is not possible, but still we have to pretend, still we have to try. Yes, it's possible. Yes, it's possible. 100% safety is possible. I mean, we have to pretend because our energy automatically, if we're going to give negative vibe, oh, 100% safety is not possible, we'll be more ignorant more negligent you know so that's why we have to pretend yes we we can try for 100 percent but of course uh, uh, we need some positive energy to as a team actually to ensure 
uh, and to meet especially our customer requirements as well. That's why uh, Saudi Aramco don't give you any project without uh, written contracts. And these contracts, I call them legal documents. And legal documents means you have signed terms and conditions. And uh, normally as a safety auditor, even as a trainer, I normally ask, especially to the top management like general manager or even you know the contract uh, review manager or contract manager as well. Have you studied every word of your contract? Like if the contract, like you have 300 pages, Honestly, not. Every word and every line of it? Not, not at all. And did you get any time? Mean, did you get time to study all 300 pages? No, you cannot take, we cannot read 300 pages in your spare time. Absolutely. So that's why, that's why, you know, sometimes, and who can remember all 300 pages? That's another question. So that's why, you know, Saudi Aramco is also at some level, a little bit flexible. That's why they tell, look, these are our minimum safety requirements. So please, at least don't violate these. They know, they know the limitations also, you know, because they are ultimately, they are also a business venture, you know, they also need to sell their oil and gas to other 40 customers, you know, maybe in more than 40 countries. But anyhow, these are some of the resource materials uh, like GI 298.010, Administrative Procedure for Contractor Camps. There are a lot of GIs in Saudi Arabia, and mashallah, you guys understand already. But yes, uh, every GI relevant to any process or any material or any project should be taken seriously and no harm to prepare a summary of key requirements or kind of action plan. Okay, these are the zero tolerance requirements. <laughs> I, I would uh, always suggest as a consultant also, you get all the GIs or you get all the contracting requirements and just prepare some of the list of zero tolerance requirements and tell every individual, look, these are the red areas. These are the line of fire, so please don't cross. <laughs> the rest of the things, of course, you can still justify and manage, but at least the line of fire must never be crossed by anyone. And uh, again, it's a hard work, it's a smart work. So we need someone who can do all these things, honestly, actually. And there is some sanitary codes that are relevant to camp management like SACS S07 or P170, uh, 12, page 190. And also construction safety manual, some requirements we're gonna get from here and contractor pre-qualification safety evaluation. Contractor written safety program, you need to validate your safety program also. That's why Aramco asked us, you know, sh share with us your safety procedures, your safety policies, your safety KPIs or objectives or kind of formats you implemented. And most importantly, for project oriented approach, they ask us HIP hazard identification plan and ERP and plenty of other documents uh, as per their work permit systems also. But yes, a minimum medical standard requirements, that manual also be helpful to meet some of the ramp requirements. And vehicle safety program is relevant to GI 6.030, traffic and vehicle safety, and SOP 19, like employee drivers. So let's understand what are our major responsibilities as a contractor. You know, here the word they mentioned, very much important, adequate resources. Imagine you are the project manager, but you don't have authorities or you don't have required resources. Or unfortunately, you don't have like uh, a dedicated responsibilities list also with you. <laughs> like you have responsibilities, you have authorities, and you have adequate resources, then as a project manager, you can't give any excuses because now you are accountable because the company have clearly defined and you agreed also, okay, I will fulfill these responsibilities, maybe 20, maybe 25, maybe 30, 
and based on the job responsibilities you also agreed some of the kpis like key performance indicator individually relevant to your position right or to your department like project management department and now these kpis again you agreed actually you were having a time to negotiate or you know to enforce oh this is not possible i uh, how much i will do <laughs> bring another project manager <laughs> let's have two project manager for this but you if you accept it now you have no choice you know because that uh, the positive leadership they don't give excuses i hope you got the point they always try their level best to fulfill whatever expected from their side and they agreed mutually but anyhow this is a triangle same like a five triangle <laughs> this triangle is also very much important responsibilities plus authorities plus adequate resources is equal to accountability so make sure you know our camp inspectors they also have a very major sensitive responsibility so they must have some authorities also and some required resources you know adequate resources whatever our inspectors required actually so if that triangle is strongly well maintained <laughs> trust me they will do this job perfectly inshallah but imagine if you just allocate a responsibility but no authorities or no adequate resources nothing will work uh, positively you know but anyhow as per aranto our major responsibility is to provide adequate resources for the preventive maintenance and timely all camp accommodation services especially electrical power air conditioning water supply plumbing even civil you know so these are some of the examples let's look at some examples of these responsibilities and action like adult supervision required because such kind of uh, situations are not acceptable i mean look at this picture such kind of situations or kind of unsafe conditions are not acceptable and sometimes our tendency is because we have project only for one month or only for two months so we don't need uh, you know so temporary solutions will work sometimes we ignore things actually but every time it's a hard to be lucky we have to bear in our mind i hope uh, one picture is more louder than 1000 words so we can learn from these pictures what mm. could be our challenges you know and yes uh, all these things are relevant to our employees behavior the mindset you're right you're right the culture the culture of the company also right and then the believe me we can manage maybe 10000 machines quite easily but managing 100 different brains so much difficult i would say because every mind is different the education background the cultural background the nationality you know might be at your project you have 22 different nationalities so be in mind you just need to identify how many guys are there not like taking these things seriously or ignoring the best safety practices you know look at one more picture proper maintenance required our water must be tested especially the drinking water or our fire safety management system or fire protection system must be verified well validated and no harm to maintain them properly you know. you know these are sometime the 
hidden areas or no harm we have toilet inspections but mostly the hidden areas in every space where you know the pest production is more higher or uh, dust accumulation is so high so it's, it's entirely depends on our janitorial staff also if our employees are responsible to maintain uh, you know sanitation and everything or set an order within their room we must clearly define oh this is your responsibility guys and let me share one more experience sometime you know we have same mentality like we are at the project site same authoritative same policing system we try to implement within our residential facilities also <laughs> you know there is a huge difference between domestic and professional life understand that fact the guys working at the site they are professionally working they will understand uh, you will sometimes be harsh okay do this and they will do it but once they are in the domestic or the social life then we have to be a little bit diplomatic polite and you know we must have some convincing power to convince them why you are telling them safety is important even here within their bedroom within their toilet you know everywhere wherever they are eating even we have to convince them why designated smoking areas are important to follow in instead of smoking in non designated areas what i mean is don't have stick all the time in your hand same like you have at project site otherwise resistance will be there remember my words it's a human nature the more you will push him the more resistance he will try to create him might be not in front of you but in back of you for sure <laughs> so what what are the key areas and remember guys wherever you see the word shell the word shell wherever either in sop or any procedure is there any policy is there anywhere you see the word shell that means it is kind of a zero tolerance requirement or you know it's more important there are other requirements but these are more important you know the shell word give you know some better highlight for that particular requirement like the contractor shall also provide adequate janitorial and cleaning resources so imagine if contractor is not providing janitorial cleaning materials or kind of uh, resources required or instead of uh, if they need 10 Uh, janitors and uh, they are just uh, providing one i hope you got the point it's not like only human capital all the resources to complete their job more effectively then they can ensure you know the proper hygiene and cleanliness on a daily basis throughout the camp It's especially the areas are important like toilets bathrooms shower rooms eating areas kitchen laundries and common areas and this is the situation sometime we observe at the site you know. and if for we all guys are valued positively why such conditions are still we are looking at in different locations imagine one guy is working 12 hours at the site now is coming back no no not 12 hours like 6 to 6 but he woke up at 4 you know or maybe at 5 so it's not 12 it's 13 already right no he work continuously or have some breaks for sure and later on coming back to the room and then maybe plenty of uh, cooking requirements or talking to the family or maybe some you know gap shop with the friends even and two more hours again gone to so 13 plus 2 15 hours already over now 
if they took more time to sleep like you know or little bit delayed even god forbid because of uh, any reasons and they have sleeping disorder <laughs> and a person having sleeping disorder or not feeling well all the way will never focus you know how that toilet is look looking like how the you know condition of my bedroom is there his focus is only to run be at site come back so the focus is 12 hours the rest of the 12 hours we are the one to support him you know that is why we are the services department not the punishing department because a lot of employees you know they 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 clearly mention in front of me our supervisors or our camp inspectors or our camp supervisors they are very much rude they are very much arrogant and we hate to support them while while you know neat and clean environment that is our own need but still their own need they are ignoring because of the poor behavior of the leadership we have at the campsite you know and yes they are also human because dealing with 500 different minds as a camp supervisor or as a camp inspector of course it's not our ordinary thing you know so that's why i always suggest please uh, no harm to uh, uh, arrange some training like stress management time management you know kind of uh, uh, emotional intelligence or customer service you know such soft skills are also important to keep our employees more effective especially the camp inspectors or supervisors because these guys have to deal with dangerous brains <laughs> not always the positive brains the brains already tired up for 12 hours and now they are just you know at the side for relax i mean they will they don't want to listen any more instructions but still you are responsible so of course you need to find out the way how to tackle all these elements these are some of the best practices but yes uh, you know the beautiful environment i can create maybe overnight within your company within your residential facilities but the real challenge is maintainability and sustainability i would say like for one day i can improve everything but to maintain them and to keep them sustained we need cooperation of everybody you know that's why it's a teamwork as well at least everybody should be responsible to maintain and keep housekeeping at least one element the housekeeping to ensure everything in proper set and housekeeping does not mean only the uh, floor cleaning or kind of uh, you know dusting no 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 yeah housekeeping means set and order standardization you know sanitation on the other side and even safety all comes together and that's we call is a housekeeping kind of a japanese housekeeping techniques like kaizen management also guide us for better housekeeping few more examples eating areas there shouldn't be any floor damage there shouldn't be any like uh, chance of uh, pass to be generated and look at the electric fly killers the lights and on the other side imagine if kitchen facilities looks like this and unfortunately i noted in several camps because i visited almost all the cities of saudi arabia and on different project sites for the last 11 years in saudi arabia so i have clear understanding especially when you work in remote areas and you know our projects is only for one month or two months and you got employees just you know from 
manpower companies uh, like a temporary employees and they have no idea how to follow aramco rules and regulations and you as a uh, company or as a customer also hard to watch them 24 hours and even for saudi aramco they also have some limitations everywhere it's a big territory it's a big brand actually and a huge number of projects are there so even for them sometimes it's hard to watch we all contractors 24 hours that is why self realization is important safety is our own responsibility safety is our own need actually so it start from me it start from you look at the kitchen facilities everything is shine you know proper sanitation is there in one of the company uh, the issue was the people are facing some allergy you know skin allergy actually and the root cause uh, we evaluated we found because of these uh, uh, cloth you know mixing together and uh, dry cleaning is being done in one shot actually and that is why some of the germs and bacterial infections they penetrated and uh, a lot of people you know they just like uh, covid 19 actually is spread around so skin allergy was spreading and we evaluated that was the terrible root cause and no doubt later on uh, uh, we gave them the system how you have to make sure you know uh, not to mix and uh, we we found like one of the third party contractor also so we'll comply all these requirements no garbage with cover provided container is important and fish thawed on top of the washing machine washing machine in the kitchen no laundry area wet cloth hands for drying no laundry area so no dry provide for immediate laundry drying so it's a game of system you know if uh, we provide a system to our employees along with the required resources of course and we try to teach them every day to make good practices their habit their daily habits you know and the medical science says one good habit you need 21 days to to be addicted to it and same way if you want to leave a bad habit again maybe 21 days practice is mandatory then you will be habitually you know? so these are some of the common areas uh, must be needed clean even the entertainment areas need to be well organized now this cleaning schedule as per our rank requirements is important to develop a master cleaning schedule for the entire camp which will include the following like areas to be cleaned and later on as per the master plan there must be individual checklist also might be displayed on the each area or uh, you guys can have uh, in your handbooks like you know every day you are checking and keeping the record but much better is to display into that area and one month one page can be used and later on you can file it also the areas to be cleaned and how often each area is to be cleaned so it must be time bound the frequency must be there like if one toilet is there are you going to clean only one time for 24 hours or two times within 24 hours and also no harm to designate who is responsible for it the responsible person and what cleaning materials and the products are used no harm to mention within the cleaning schedule 
this is just an example like area like bathroom walls you can have weekly frequency but cleaning material detergent and cloth method of cleaning pre clean so same way you need to make sure you know the method is also there how to clean and who will complete it and check by especially from the camp inspector you know. and there must be maintenance and safety plan because uh, in the summary outline we noted electrical systems are there you know the kitchen facilities pest management a lot of things are there so no harm to have a complete maintenance and safety plan which need to be developed as per our rank requirements especially to ensure hygienic operation for all camp services and the maintenance of critical equipment and this plan must be in written actually and i'm sure you guys would have it included in the contractor safety manual as well this plan should include all the topics discussed in this presentation so you can outline you know the important areas now camp must be provided with at least two approval telephones for use in emergencies all residents shall have access 27 24 no emergency number shall be posted where the phone is fire ambulance medical police and security for this emergency numbers i will just highlight one of the practical element you know which evaluated again by saudi aramco professional uh, officials what they mention is you have emergency telephone numbers well displayed but nobody knows how to what to say actually or what is an emergency or the different types of emergencies they don't know or what to talk what information they have to share in case of emergency they don't know and even though you have fire evacuation map or emergency evacuation map but again they don't know how to follow this uh, evacuation map like if you don't have a proper a proper evacuation drills or kind of uh, emergency drills because practice makes a man perfect right so whatever plan you have must be tested and validated through some practical exercises this is an example now sleeping rooms uh, they need to be kept clean a decorated space for bedding and closes like storage space for each employee in accordance with saudi aramco sanitary code but make sure there are no insects rodents no overcrowding as well but i'm sure this overcrowding still we can observe still we can observe in different camps you know this is just an example <laughs> like a sir <certain> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so in short writing beautiful stories is every everyone can do it but the but the real challenge is on site improvements you know implementing all these things at site that is the real challenge and every brain is different you will yeah. tell them don't sit all together in one room and don't drink different things all together and don't smoke together still they will find the way you know because they are the best friends so dealing with different brains especially the human brains is one of the difficult job so these are some of the examples you know like uh, double triple or maybe six beds in one room bed bugs i always say this is one of the terrible monster you know yeah yeah <laughs> and uh, no doubt we have solutions for everything but still it will find a way actually you just ignore for one or two days and see the production speed of uh, these bed bugs and they are the blood suckers you know yes eating areas uh, we need to make sure you know the food preparation shall comply with cooking and storage temperatures according to industry standards 
and make sure the lpg cylinders shall be located outside of the any building sheltered from the sun and rain and provided with suitable protected piping as well food temperature monitoring before we discuss that one let me share one practical scenario here at one of the site the people started feeling the employees started feeling food poisoning very frequently and the company again interrogated uh, very deeply and they found the catering company what they were doing is they were buying the raw materials or kind of vegetables or meat at the last expiry date like today is the last expiry date they will go to the market and purchase immediately with 50% discount or maybe 75% discount and immediately cook and deliver and also it tend to be very honest because the guys are already hungry at the site and no one was there who have understanding like a food safety inspector or have a clear auditing skills how to trace how to trace every step either the contractor is playing with us or he is giving us fully hygienic food you know and whoever was having better immunity system no food poisoning but the guy is already little bit uh, you know might be aged or might be you know having some uh, lower or weak immune system they were the guys in danger zone actually and no company hire food safety inspector because they believe why should we pay 10000 real you know <laughs> only to the food safety inspector and it's quite logical but in your contract with uh, you know with your catering company no harm to put that one condition and designate the days okay we need fresh vegetable you know or the fresh meat with with minimum like uh, 10 days or 15 days remain for expiry instead of just uh, uh, buying you know at the last expiry date or even no how to mention we don't want to see any item to be cooked and deliver which is like uh, last 3 uh, days expiry date is there or last 5 days you just can put some terms actually in the contract and they will started realizing this is the first step and ultimately if you are cooking internally by yourself make sure the food temperature monitoring is there like cook food uh, 75 degree or above and heated storage above 60 degree frozen food below 18 degree or chilled food below 5 degree and somebody should be there to monitor especially the camp inspector you know i'm not telling you have to be the food safety inspector all the way but at least the minimal important things uh, no harm to be knowledgeable right so food hygiene is critical you know this hair net imagine if a hair is coming and someone is eating and found it's horrible right the whole taste is over that's why we need full cover even this monstache and beard there are some snoods actually you know this uh, monstache and beard these hair should also be protected to be very honest if we talk about the fully well equipped food hygiene system actually and hand washing like clean food preparation counters wash basin for cleaning food and hands past fruit screens or doors and windows make sure no chance of pest to be coming indoor frequently and pest control management uh, you know sometime uh, mostly we all like depending on the third party contractors then at least we must be fully capable how to tackle these third party contractors you know to get maximum performance from their side the more better control and management you have 
uh, with your contractors because you are paying them, right? You are paying them for fire safety system maintenance and all. You are paying them for pest control, even, you know, uh, different kind of uh, H2F sensor monitoring and a lot of air analysis or maybe sometime, you know, different kind of uh, third party contractors we apply. What I mean is, if you have these third party contractors, use them effectively and get maximum performance. Don't just get the report that everything is okay. And they are also waiting the paycheck every month or maybe as yes, per the contractual term sign. You know. Because if you are managing your third party contractors more effectively, your life will be more easier. That's why, you know, no harm to have a third party like for pest control and make sure you also have uh, internal inspections by yourself. If there shouldn't be any chance of such kind of pest. And what are the best way to prevent pest entry? That means no floor damage, no holes. Even under the door, there shouldn't be any gap. We have sometimes rubber sheets, sometimes, you know, well-designed products are available in the market now. Under the door, you can attach and nothing can come in. And this is very much important. Avoid food storage in bedrooms. Otherwise, the pest will be more, you know, they'll get more attraction, actually. Even the waste bin, how far you kept them, you know, away from your bedrooms or away from your camp even. Because, and either these waste bins, where you are putting food even, the wasted or remained food, this waste bin, either you are covering it or not, that's another question. If it is not covered, again, you are welcoming more pests, especially the cat, mice, and different kind of flying pests, you know. I hope you got the point. Wherever the food accommodation or uh, accumulation is there, more pest attraction will be there. So be careful with that. That's why we need to train our employees don't store food in their bedrooms, actually. Yes, bacteria double their numbers uh, every 20 minutes. After one hour, 1,000 bacteria become 8,000. If we truly want to avoid food poisoning, it's important to manage such kind of bacterial infections. So caused by the eating contaminated food, it can make you very sick or even kill you actually because it's poisonous. Your body will lose fluids uh, that your vital organs need for you to survive. Now for LPG cylinders, uh, must never store inside the buildings. We all know and natural rubber hoses must be there. Drinking water, again, it's a common sense. We need a safe, clean and plentiful supply of cool, fresh, portable drinking water and shall be provided to residents 24 seven actually. But yes, uh, you have to make sure some of the water quality testing is there through samples as per the Saudi Aramco Environmental Health Code. No, again, third party contractor is there. So if you are collecting these reports, how frequent, like last time when you uh, had your water testing from the accredited laboratory, one month before or two months or three months, what is the frequency of uh, this water testing? Question, sir. Yes, please. Yeah, for the water testing, for the water testing, every delivery of, for, from the from the water tanker need the water testing from the third party or one supplier only, one supplier only, for example, for uh, drinking water, one supplier only will check one time for the, or they have a validity for this one? Uh, 
you know we apply two conditions actually one condition we need with every delivery the quality compliance certificate for that water either quality. you are getting it either quality. you are getting it or you are not getting okay. that's a different story but i'm telling my you know when i was working as a qhc manager so what i was doing is i need quality validation or quality compliance certificate for each eatable whatever we are buying whatever we are buying from our, our suppliers from manufacturers even for the paper cups you know even for the paper cups mm. and sometime if i want to go deeper even i will tell okay i need because you are supplying us paper cups i need migration testing report also that within no, the pit uh, yeah now in saudi aramco procedure in saudi aramco procedures so what is the what is the best practice that we need to implement what we need to implement uh, in the camp for example for for the delivery of drinking water how many you know, how many how many months or how many how many uh, days before we need to we need to testing for the drinking water the best practice is the best practice is with every delivery no harm to get report from your uh, supplier and the uh -huh. second part is your responsibility so have quarterly testing at least you know because you are buying this water now you are storing somewhere no you are storing so you have two types of reports one is external from your suppliers and one yeah. is your responsibility that you are for our, environment, for our environment i know exactly because you okay. need to double check na we can't blindly trust on any report we are getting from our contractors you know L let me give you saudi aramco example let's take an example of paper cups if a ramco is buying paper cups from lulu market in in thousands or in millions you know sometime as per their requirement now they get uh, reports migration testing and uh, paper cup testing from the lulu and lulu is getting from the manufacturer but still a ramco is not satisfied you know what they are doing in one of my training to saudi ramco guys one of their quality manager he mentioned is that look even we going to send you know without telling to anyone some of the samples to singapore laboratory to double check the supplier is not playing with us that the reports what they are giving us and the reports what we are getting comply to each other and there isn't any variables or kind of uh, threats you know so so two way responsibilities one on the shoulders of our suppliers and the second we as a buyer you know. i hope you got the point so frequency is not but quarterly is much better especially if you are storing the water and you know uh, what is the frequency of changing that water that's also like after every 24 hours you are filling your tanks or after one week you are filling your tanks Uh -huh. or you are filling your tanks maybe you know some one tank maybe sometime after one month sometime after three months so according to the frequency you need to uh, predefine you know that is your internal criteria just to keep your employees safe forget about saudi ramco first of all your employees because food poisoning is a deadly monster and to kill our employees you know so in that scenario choice is yours but quarterly of course as per aramco theory is no harm to do at least quarterly you can get from your supplier and you can send by yourself also it's all but anyhow uh, i noted aramco they will happy even with suppliers testing reports your internal reports are not there still they will not tell you anything because sometimes you are more knowledgeable than saudi aramco officials also this is another gap so we are getting sometimes that advantage you know. i hope you got the point
Okay, guys, uh, this water supply is some uh, uh, salmon common problems are there, like lack of chlorine testing, no chlorine detectable in the drinking water, connection hoses left unprotected, tank air intakes unprotected or inspection hatches left open, or water too hot due to heating by sunlight or water uh, stagnating in pipe works or tanks. So even within the tank, any fungus or any kind of, so that means the complete water line testing also sometimes you need to make sure. If it is a poor coating, a time will come, even you know the fungus and plenty of other uh, in the testing laboratory, they will highlight actually. And then the issue is not with the water, the issue is with the line, the issue is with the tank cleaning, you know. I repeat again, sometimes water is not contaminated, but where you are storing because of that product, that tank or that pipeline, basically they are contaminated. And the moment you are using the same line for the water, of course the water is going to be contaminated. Let me give you one example, the live practical example. At one of the side, I noted one eye washer. You know, in case of emergency, we use eye washer. And yes, it's sensorized. Yes. Now, sometimes I noted the eye washer is there, but the water is contaminated because for the last six months, nobody used. And because of humidity and high heat and plenty of uh, dust accumulation, the same water is contaminated and nobody is checking inside the condition of the water. Sometimes the eye washer is there, but no water. Sometimes the eye washer is there, but not in visible areas or not in the designated uh, reasonable area where the people can easily access and use it in case of emergency, in case of any eye irritation. Sometimes the eye washer is there, but the sensor is not functioning. Even the water is there, but sensor is not working. So if the water for eye washer is very much important, imagine the water which we are going to intake, how much it could be important, you know. So that's why it's, it's very much important to understand the whole cycle, how we are uh, uh, buying the water, where we are keeping, under what temperature, how long we kept that water under that particular temperature, what can go wrong, any chance of contamination, if a uh, sandstorm for the last one week, two or three sandstorms are there, do you think the same water would be drinkable if it is not properly sealed or if you are using big tanks? Imagine if your refrigerator is, uh, or your fridge is uh, just, uh, you know, uh, defaulted for three days or four days, God forbid, and you couldn't bring new one. And later on, you brought new one and the same water you are putting in the fridge. And you believe it's not contaminated. So I hope you got the point. For each element, because these are uh, highly, you know, hygienic food items, like especially water or any food element which we are eating. These are fully uh, high hygienic products, actually. We need to make sure nothing will go wrong especially any food poisoning chance is not there. That's why the water quality chlorine is added to safeguard against contamination such as dust or bacteria. That's why we use chlorine and make sure your supplier is following all these criteria because he's also a Ramco approved supplier, right? But still double check, either he's following a Ramco requirements, is respecting a Ramco requirements or not. The water starts off with a low level at the plant, which can drop over time and some residual, residual chlorine is lost when it is transferred to the tanker. More is lost when the road tanker discharges to the static tank at the camp and heat degrades chlorine rapidly within 24 hours. So how we are storing water after buying it, that's also critical. Yes, there must be chlorine testing, like you must test the delivery of water tankers to see if water is safe to drink. And make sure you have your own water treatment plant also. 
make sure you test it daily twice now this water treatment plant sometime you know contractor if they get only one month contract or two months so they pre uh, negotiate with saudi aramco we, we uh, sorry we these are the requirements uh, give us uh, flexibility for not applicable <laughs> but if you will blindly accept all the requirements of aramco then that's your failure to be very honest before you accept any project no harm to double check what requirements are not applicable or you can talk to aramco officials look our projects is only for 10 days or 15 days how come we can fulfill all these you know so these are the uh, line of files which will never be crossed by our employees or our system will be respecting your requirements the rest of the things not applicable but normally i noted we don't we don't discuss anything with their employee officials i don't know why we have such kind of uh, scary behavior while a ramp is there to support us as a customer they are also there to support us and we are serving them to support their business right not testing kits such as the uh, lobby bond or uh, competitors or use as swing pools are ideal available from local suppliers now how are we going to manage trash trash at camp building must not be allowed to accumulate first of all daily trash management instead of accumulating trash bins should be emptied at daily and taken in designated temporary storage area yards parking lots <laughs> ियंटरीपोर्ट वॉटर we can double check like a cross check so i will share that document okay you you just note down my whatsapp number so later on and you know your environmental coordinator environmental coordinator must have this document for sure like for air analysis for water analysis all these things must be with your environmental coordinator as well yes because that's fall under environmental management system as well so these conditions basically are not ex acceptable like to be amputated daily and to be amputated weekly like the bigger one but i am normally encourage to the companies make sure even the bigger one must be have covered actually otherwise germs and bacteria penetrated in the air and still it is harmful for our employees and even pests you know like cats and mice they all would be attracted if food is there in the waste bin actually okay now the fire system uh, is all must be as per the nfp like national fire protection associate codes there must be like smoke detectors shall have good batteries at times now the battery system is no more i don't know why this uh, slide is not updated uh, by aramco but uh, the battery operated system is no more what we required is addressable i hope you got the point yes sir yes sir yeah so addressable uh, you know this uh, smoke detectors and the complete system is required portable fire extinguisher shall be made available and inspected on a monthly basis look at some of the pictures such kind of poor management of course would be a red mark this is how you can have kind of inspection tag filled out double check that the sensor is working and no harm to test sometime sir no yeah that is battery type fire extinguisher yeah battery but but now it's addressable but still yeah. it must be tested like you give some smoke you have some you know so let that sensor work actually and it must be attached with the alarm system as well and you can make it tested yeah. the moment you have uh, fire evacuation drill or fire fighting drill so the whole system can be verified otherwise again through the 
third party fire inspection teams you know yeah. instead of uh, just accepting their reports you can ask them have you practically checked or you just tick 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 and giving us a report okay so fire exit doors uh, shouldn't be locked actually okay and also from inside out the, all the fire exits must be open from inside out actually and all the electrical system especially the electrical appliances or power cords power cords basically uh, shouldn't be overloaded especially the extensions and multi outlet strips must be approved vessel like ul and ce like ul stand for underwriter laboratories and ce means again the european protection mark is there this includes uh, those devices owned by the contractor or the employee resident and no voltage regulators or plug in adapters are in use electrical electrical cords are not to be overloaded that's critically important is it acceptable no no but our employees for them it is accepted <laughs> <laughs> for us of course we are knowledgeable technically sound having some leadership positions for us it's not acceptable but think about your painters yes. your janitors yes. your depending the resources also but the only no any resources no choice they will use that absolutely right absolutely right so we can try we can try our level best to improve such conditions in yeah so make sure you know the electrical items must be marked ul or fm fm means factory mutual or ul these are basically trademarks quality validation marks uh, because if you see ul or fm or ce mark on any product you can trust you can trust these products are manufactured as per international european regulations or as per gmp like goods manufacturing best practices but ul and fm currently they are more acceptable but i noted plenty of c mark also <laughs> because how many things you gonna verify okay you know make sure you have terminal like you know the good extensions and uh, for this for all these things what i normally suggest buy if you are working with a ramco buy everything within the ramco's contracting pool you know don't buy anything from here and there find out and negotiate and sign even the contract or kind of mou you can sign okay whenever we need these things uh, these are the items we are going to buy from you and no harm to negotiate the price for you this price will never change especially for next 6 months or one year you know and through our procurement department we can have such kind of uh, beneficial agreements along with our contractors now the medical contractor requirements regarding availability of medical services shall be implemented we need a trained nurse or the physician or ambulance shall be available 24/7 and if uh, with the uh, wow is not a contract requirement the contractor shall have minimum 10% of employees resident certified in first aid and pls that is why you know normally uh, people they come to us for first aid and pls training as well have a clean hygienic treatment room with a well stocked first aid kit that is frequently replenish uh, replenished or available 24/7 be in compliance with the saudi aramco minimum medical standard requirements manual so mm sr now we are getting training and there are certain references actually and all these lengthy procedures or kind of manuals must be av available with your safety department if they tell we don't have i would recommend 
please uh, go to a Ramco company man or talk to their uh, safety officials and ask all these uh, documents, you know, it must be in your record because you can't follow them until you have all these things. Now, what do you have for ambulance service? If you are a contractor, are you going to rely only on a ramp to facility or do you have your own kind of ambulance service as well? We are uh, kind of uh, ramp to standard. So it is signed. So in the contract, it is clearly mentioned that the yes. ambulance or emergency service will be provided by Saudi Arabia. Now, what do you have a medical services facility? What do you have? Do you have a kind of a room and you know the first or kind of a nurse or a specified we have, a, we, have a, we have an approved clinic from a approved clinic from a Jaha from Jam Hopkins, no, as per the RMP standard also. Okay. So uh, materials excluding the ambulance are, uh, are available from our clinic, okay. including the also approved by uh, Jaha also. Excellent, Russian. So you have well prepared, proactive by yourself also. So minimum medical standard requirements manual, you just need to <clears throat> study and have a checklist like employee population exceeds 50 in single location or within radius of 15 kilometers. We need a physician actually with operator facility and large size with the laboratory. We need to make sure access to medical care and also the risk factors the possibility of mass casualties is high if a work site is potentially high risk for accident. We need specialized services also in view of the remoteness of company operation for an on site specialized medical procedure or diagnostic or otherwise will be cost effective and benefit to the company operation. Same way, these are some of the again requirements of uh, that's why I'm telling this manual must be a part of your documentation. This is kind of a category B, level B, like physician operator facility, small size without laboratory and radiology services. But make sure the employee doesn't exceed 50 workers in a single location or within a radius of 15 kilometers. Access to medical care must be there and also risk factors need to be evaluated. And specialized services are also important here. Same way there are C level and category you know, see that means nurse operator facility. And uh, uh, for this one, again, same requirement, employee population like 50 workers in single location or within a radius of 15 kilometers, same access to medical. So normally up to the C level, all requirements are almost same. But for D level, minimum like first aid kits and cabinets must be there. That means employer who employs less than 50 employees workmen shall provide at site a first aid cabinet and shall assign an appropriate number of his workmen to receive first aid training like Saudi Arab government decision as per the, because it's not like always the Saudi Aramco requirements. Saudi Aramco requirements, they are derived from OSHA regulations or Saudi Arabian legal laws, or maybe some from ILO, International Labor Organization and maybe some from WHO, you know, so it's a combination of different international standards. And then they uh, have some their own theories based on these requirements, they prepared some of the procedures or kind of SOPs actually, or GIs, we have general instructions for each area. Now, camp inspections, uh, minimum you can do it weekly. The contractor camp supervisors shall ensure that weekly inspections are conducted. You know, there isn't any benefit of inspection if you don't document. So make sure you use form B, like for inspection checklist. And checklist item considered to be high risk will require immediate action. Deficiencies are to be noted, corrective actions to be implemented, recommended and implemented. And make sure you also have this weekly inspection checklist well kept at contractors campsite. So anytime if a RAMCO officials are coming, so they can double check and verify either the weekly inspections are being done, yes or no, 
On a monthly basis, these these weekly inspections shall be submitted to applicable Saudi Aramco camp administration team as well. And even you submit, make sure you also have one copy with you in in soft in hard. It's all you know. So it's an example of form B. Now inspection checklist B is a kind of a weekly inspection B form. Go to resources like GI two nine eight point zero one zero. Within GI you will get it. Go to the over checklist with the class and see example of the next two slides. These are the examples of uh, checklist. Uh, can we ask for uh, some forms that you can send to our email? So we have. Uh, no problem. No problem. No problem. I will share. I will share plenty of GIs and maybe it will help you further. You know. And also the list that we need to comply. And what I'm going to do is I will share this presentation also. Okay. No problem. I have no problem to share. Okay, thank you. I will share this presentation also. Might be in future, you can train. Like you are over busy with some other position, so you can train someone else. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm telling because after all, uh, you can't revolve in the same circle. You need to grow, right? Yes. And you'll be growing, inshallah. So go over the checklist with the class and see example of the next users. So these are the some examples. Like appropriate number of train five bottles are there? Yes or no? Target completion is it immediate? So make sure corrective action is also uh, well mentioned there and date completed. Same way, appropriate number of five first aid or the fire warden appointed. Yes, immediate target completion date. Corrective action, aid wardens were trained for safety officer. They did this and date completed. Who will do it? You understand better, mashallah. So weekly camp inspection exercise, imagine that you are inspecting a camp, get an inspection checklist form B, look at the following pictures regarding a pretend camp inspection that you're doing, fill in the appropriate sections of the checklist accordingly. So go and double check either the fire eviction plans are there, well visible, easily, easy to understand also. Sometimes we make it yes. so complicated. So nobody knows. What is the benefit benefit of this evacuation map? Like, so it should be easy to understand, well drawn and well visible with some symbols, so everybody can understand. Make sure the electrical systems, like especially the extension boards, like at your camp facility, how many extension boards are there? Have you ever noted, like you have more than hundred extension boards or? more than 200 or how many they have in hidden areas in cabinets which you truly need to find out and then see the condition and don't accept any temporary solution then. okay so overcrowding or kind of you know like same way they have their dresses and same way with the electrical or electronics compliances, you have uh, kind of what I say, fuel actually, <laughs> fuel for fire. So heat is already there and very near you put fuel and now a little short circuit and the game is over. I hope you got the point. So this triangle, the fire triangle, like fuel, oxygen and heat, we need to we we need to keep them away actually or if we are unable to keep them away at least they must be managed safely and the less the fuel you have in the building less the fatalities would be there that's another you know, very less damage because more fuel means more terrible consequences Look at uh, you know the overcrowding when sometimes spray is there, and uh, you know they have they have spray and they have smoking also. <laughs> you know once we <laughs> expect the unexpected from the brains of your employees. So you need to think what intentional and unintentional human errors. I repeat, it's not like only unintentional, even intention, maybe suicidal attempt. 
somebody is fed up he's he's you know lost his brain how are you going to avoid that he can't attempt any suicide actually how are you going to ensure that only i hope you got the point we we just need to be proactive actually not to leave any area like in one of the company is again a live example there was a axe you know we we take it for cutting wood and and he cut the neck of uh, his uh, his uh, colleague actually 